Here in Greenville, South Carolina, we are in the thick of it in our quest to identify the world champion in the sport of bass fishing. This is it, the 2018 version of the Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by Dick Sporting Goods. 52 anglers out here on day two trying to make the cut to 25 who will go for the championship. The Bassmaster Classic is a high stress tournament. There, there's so much at stake here. Your careers have been made just on this one tournament alone. But that's what it's about. You know, the world is here. They're all watching it, eyes from all over the world. The classic is so drawn out compared to everything else we fish. Typically, we roll into town, it's over in a week. The classic doesn't even start for a week. The classic is an absolute process. I mean, there's always stuff going on. The lights, the glamour, uh, media day. There's so many things going on, and then, you know, all of a sudden, it's go time. It's a dream come true to be here fishing the Super Bowl of Bass Fishing, the Bassmaster Classic. You know, this is an event that everybody dreams to fish in. I've been dreaming about this since I was probably six years old. I caught my first bass when I was four, and it just lit a fire in me that has never been put out. And I lived, ate, sleep, and breathed bass fishing. This is a classic trophy that I have. I I constantly go back and I look at the names on there of, of the people who won the event and your, your name gets stamped on that trophy. The process of thinking about winning, that's, it's there, but the process of just breaking down and catching their ass, that's really there. You know, I just, there's nothing more that I want right now than to win this event. At the end of the day, we're all battling for one position and that's to hold that trophy up on Sunday. If there's any doubt in what plays the biggest in the mind of a professional angler, I think we dispel those doubts right now. Every one of them thinks about this. The World Championship of Bass Fishing, the Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. That's the scene right before takeoff on day number two. 52 anglers out there, but by the end of the day, we'll be down to 25. Davey Hyde, Mark Zona, a lot of things. Distractions galore at the Classic, but there's one thing these guys have to do is keep their eye on the ball. No doubt about it. I really think Lake Hartwell served a lot of curveballs to some of the biggest names in bass fishing, but with that said, some of the other big names in bass fishing are in our top five, and really, you got to hear Jacob Wheeler at the top of the show make a comment. The classic is a process. Step number one of the process, day one, is done. It's almost like it kind of starts over on day two. And every day is different. Every day a different set of challenges for these guys. Every day a different set of challenges. And as you heard most of those guys talk about, it's such a process and it's wearing on you mentally and physically, but you have to adjust each and every day. At Lake Hartwell, just west of Greenville, South Carolina, first light. And there are 52 boats getting ready to go on this final day. 51 anglers chasing our leader, Jason Christie, and right behind him, the 2016 and 2017 champions of the Geico Bassmaster Classic. Robbie Floyd down at the takeoff right now in the boat with Jason Christie with our Geico quotes from the boat. Jason Christie on top of the leaderboard, and the two guys behind you are the past two Classic champions. You have to be feeling good about that. Yeah, there's a bunch more Classic champions behind them. You know, different conditions. This is where I want to be, leading the Classic. Um, I just want to be leading it after day three. You know, I got to start from scratch this morning, learn something, and run with it. Only one guy was able to take a, catch a 20-pound bag on day number one. He's looking to do it two days in a row. Robbie Floyd with our leader, Jason Christie. Let's track him right now. Exactly right. Jason Christie was on everybody's radar coming into this tournament. Like Brent Ayler, like Casey Ashley, a lot of history here, winning big events. Jason Christie will tell you, coming to the Bassmaster Classic this week is like no other. It is a long week, you know, it's, you have to separate yourself from, from the hoopla and the fishing. And, you know, for the most part, the hoopla is over with and, and now it's, it's, now it's back to fishing. Even though it is, you know, the classic and the most important tournament ever, um, it's still a fishing tournament and, and we have, one part over and two parts to go, and I feel like if I can just get off to a good start like I did this morning, I'll be good. Look 
got one. That lightning can make them bite weird, and that first one kind of bit that way. Just gotta keep moving, keep trying different things until we figure out what they want today. Covering water is gonna be the theme for Jason Christie. Throwing that vibrating jig, covering water, keeper number one in the boat. And if there's really a theme from day number one, most of the leaders fishing shallow, dirtier water with bladed jigs, one of those anglers, Edwin Evers and Davey Height, I throw it to you. He has one spot that he knocked their lights out. He did. It's a little different than you see Jason Christie fishing. He's fishing around that shallow water cover more. Edwin's on a staging area back in the creek, like you said, Zona. It's dirty water back in the back of these creeks, not out on the main lake like we saw in the previous classics here. But Edwin's got a unique spot. These fish are set up in one little spot, and he was able to catch 20 plus fish there yesterday. This morning, it's happening for him again. Exactly right. And after the day one weigh in, Edwin said, Look, I was mad that I had to go through that many keepers to upgrade my limit. And as we're seeing this morning, a lot of short striking fish and fish not committing to his bait. Edwin Evers made a comment after the day one weigh in. As hard as I leaned on this spot, my one key spot, I know I'm going to have to adapt and adjust my techniques throughout day two. Oh, my heart's pounding. They're there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I just want to get my boat set up. I want to get it right where I want it. I got a little uh, shallow point right here. It drops off pretty deep on both sides. That creek comes in, swings off of it. I don't know why they're there, but I know yesterday there was a ton of them there. Edwin Evers stressed to us how small, actually small, that little spot, that little sweet spot back up the Togaloo River is right there. And that was actually his second spot on day number one, but he wound up staying there. Exactly right. Really, if you listen to Edwin Evers' voice right there, very excited to see his school is back. From one classic champion to another, Jordan Lee. And I'll throw it to you, Davey Height. If you really watched Jordan Lee's day number one of this tournament, it was constantly just building building because he was able to start just like this morning he was able to start in a blow through area catch a limit of fish it means so much to build your day to build that momentum and then at the end of the day to be right there in the race to win another Bassmaster Classic means everything. Jordan Lee with a solid day one stringer starting out this morning looking to put five in the box. I, I, just, I feed off momentum even if they're little fish and it I know they're not going to win a tournament. When you're getting bit, start out the day in the Bassmaster Classic, it just gives you a little momentum. There we go. There we go. Play start. Good spot. Good spot. That's a good one. Yes. Good way to start right there. Good spot. Heard him say it. Jordan Lee believed, big believer, in fact, in momentum. He is absolutely carrying over the momentum. He finished day number one with right here into day number two. Looking for back-to-back -back Bassmaster Classics. And of course, anyone who talked to Jordan before this tournament started, he told them without hesitation, I'm not on anything. I got nothing going here. <laughs> Let's gotta be feeling good about it now though. When you don't have a good practice and you don't feel real confident in a lot of things, I just kind of gravitate to what I feel like I'm good at and what I like doing and I feel like, you know, this time of year it should be working and it's not a, a thing where I went out and just got a ton of bites doing it. 
but you know I got a couple of the right ones and that's what I was looking for and that's really the only way I knew to get those bites. You know, that's what I like doing. The 2018 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by Dick Sporting Goods is brought to you by Berkeley, Minkota, Hook, and by Mercury. This 48th edition of the Geico Bassmaster Classic, this world championship, definitely has something for everyone, especially the kids that get hooked on fishing experience. Drew, get this 14,000 visitors. What a great way to introduce the next generation to outdoor recreation and conservation. That's a big mission. The Bass Angler Sportsman Society, which is 50 years old this year. We got a classic. We got the world championship going on right now. And a lot of folks say, Z, this is all about Oklahoma versus Alabama. Pretty much. Three of our top six anglers fishing up the lake and right now things not to Edwin Evers liking. Well we got here to where I caught a lot of those fish yesterday and uh, there's some still some fish here they're just not as big nor near as many so I you know back in my mind I'm wondering did somebody else come fish them yesterday you know what's changed um, I don't know Tell you after what we got here is just a little point where the creek swings up. I think they just feed up on it, but um, sometime today we'll catch some good fish off of it. I'm guessing. Just like day one of this Bassmaster Classic, Edwin Evers catching them almost every single cast. And if he's not catching them, literally getting a bite every cast. And here's the one thing, though. If you look at what Edwin Evers has put in his live well so far on day two of competition here, none of these bass are ones he wants to carry to the weigh-in. Edwin Evers has a decision to make, and he needs to make it soon. And they're getting smaller. Hmm. That one got smaller. We're all right. We got three small ones in the boat. We're gonna try a few more baits, and then we're gonna go try some different stuff. Definitely thinking about that decision. You talked about Mark Zona. Let's go from Edwin Evers to another Oklahoma, another specialist on these Grand River Lakes like Grand Lake and Fort Gibson and Hudson Lake up there. A lot of great success in his home state. He's definitely a home state guy, James Elam, but he's got a game that he can take anywhere. Yes, Tommy, I like what James Elam is doing. Very similar to Edwin Evers. They're back in these creeks, stained water but they're starting off on the staging areas, the last deep water before you get to the spawning flats. Those fish set up there overnight. Great start for James Zeeland. Watching him on day number one, one of the first guys to boat a limit, and it was a good one. 16 and a half pounds of bass on day number one. Of course, last year, he was in it till the very end, the bitter end, finishing in fourth place at Lake Conroe. 17 pounds, 12 You know, when it's so hard to make the classic, um, you really want to take advantage of the opportunity. And, you know, last year at Conroe, I ended up doing pretty well there and gave me a little taste of that, and it was a good time, and it was a lot of fun. But, yeah, once, once you uh, get a little close there, get a little sniff of the success or, you know, that, that moment or whatever of the classic, you, you want back and you want to do it again. So I'm, I'm going to try to, to do that again. Nice and pale. 
James Elam on the board, maybe starting a little bit slower than he did on day number one, but James Elam along with Edwin Evers, part of that Oklahoma gang that has more or less unlocked the lake here. The third member of that, the fellow who came in with the biggest stringer on day number one, 20 pounds and 14 ounces, Jason Christie. If you exactly really look right. at the history of the Bassmaster Elite Series, guys like Aaron Martins, Tommy Bipple, Gary Klein, they'll tell you, you will only have so many shots to win the Classic. I have been close in this event several times and I feel like a lot of the people have jumped on Christie's train and, and I don't know if it's a sorrow train or what it is, but um, you know, a lot of people I think want me to win and you know, I feel like one of these days it's going to happen. Hopefully it happens this week. A little better. To me, that's all I can do is be close, be there, have that chance. I feel like if I kept, if I keep packing around there, you know, sometimes, sometimes they got to give in. But um, you know, I just there's nothing more that I want right now than to win this event. Jason Christie getting off to another good start. It's so important on Lake Hartwell this time of year, whether you're fishing offshore, fishing deep, like Brent Ayler, Casey Ashley likes to do, or if you're fishing shallow like he's doing, James Elam, Edwin Evers, it's so important to start in the right place, get a few fish in live well, because it kind of goes into a lull midday and then some guys go into different patterns as the sun comes up, as the day progresses, another good start for Jason Christie. And really, if you look at Jason Christie's week, eerily similar, this Bassmaster Classic, to the 2016 Classic on Grand Lake, where he commanded it the entire event until this man right here took it from him the last day, Edwin Evers. 37 pounds, nine ounces, looking for 22, 15, 12 pounds, nine ounces, Edwin Evers has done it! Z, Tommy. I've had that same thing happen to me. There's no worse feeling in bass fishing, and it never leaves your memory to be so close to winning the Classic and have to walk down those steps with nobody there to see you but your family. Beaver's the big winner in 2016. This year, he seems like he's lost a bit on day two. Sitting here in the back of my mind, I'm wondering, you know, a lot of times I believe in the spring, on sunny days, those fish are up high in the water column, you know, on cloudy days, they get on the bottom. Toss a jig out there, see what happens. Fish. Golly, he choked it. Look at that one. Look at that thing right there. He ate it. Edwin Evers certainly not on the pace he was on day number one, but good enough to take over the lead from Jason Christie. Evers on top in this week that certainly demands a lot of an angler, and it's not just all taking place on the water. You know, the Classic is full of distractions. It's a whole bunch of hoopla and then a little bit of fishing. But that's what it's about. You know, the world is here. We're all watching it. Eyes from all over the world. You know, and once I got in that boat this morning and I was floating, I left everything else on shore. You know, it was time to start. The World Championship of Fishing, the Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Day two of competition. Everyone eventually winds up here. Bon Secours Wellness Arena for the weigh-in. Yesterday's weigh-in, day one weigh-in, marked by this, a big bass of six pounds, 11 ounces. That's our Berkeley big bass of the tournament, brought in by one of the contenders for Rookie of the Year last year, Mark Daniels Jr. It's the classic. You got to stay on your toes. You got to keep an open mind. You don't want to pigeonhole yourself into any one technique or idea. I'm going to allow myself to continue to try new things because, you know, I'll be honest with you, that's, that's what got me that big bite. There's just a lot to manage here this week. But at the end of the day, Harwell's a great fishery. It's full of bass. And, uh, you know, we're looking to see if we can go nab us another 611.
Classic Lake Hartwell spotted bass for a rookie in the classic mark, Daniels Jr. Jordan Lee came out. He was a he came right from the college ranks, as a matter of fact, from Auburn University into the Bassmaster Classic at Lake Gunnersville. And back in 2014, throw out that first bad day, he could have been there on top at the very end. No doubt about it. And really, we said throughout this tournament, you're going to have to change. And that's exactly what Jordan Lee has done so far, starting off each morning on a herring bite, whether he's throwing a swim bait or a deep diving suspending jerk bait. And here's the interesting thing about Jordan. If you looked at day one, catching bigger largemouth late in the day, Jordan is most dangerous when he's not on anything and he just goes with the flow. I got a little spot. It's got a little school of spots on it. Little road bed. They're all over it. I mean, I'm just seeing a bunch of fish on my graph. Thought I pulled them all, but having to back out a little bit. That feels a little bit better. Yeah. A little bit better. Got one hook. Number five. A little bit better. Five fish for Jordan Lee. That's the plan to start the day. Certainly served him well on day number one. If he can now go. Looking for some big ones and have the success he had yesterday. He could find himself in the lead after a couple of days of fishing. Let's get back up the Tougaloo River to Edwin Ebert. Exactly, and one of the things that we've noticed, and the folks at home don't see this, there is a lot of other competitors up here, Davey. They are, they're fishing similar places. They're looking for the stained water in the backs of these creeks. Not only is James Elam, Edwin Ebers, Jason Christie, lots of folks looking for the same thing. I just worry that these places will run out of fish before Sunday. Houston, we got issues. <laughs> Cut my line wrapped around the end of my rod. Can't really put a lot of pressure on it. I got it <laughs> around the end of it. So I've educated every one of them fish on some sort of moving bait. I throw a wacky worm out there, and immediately on the first cast, I catch one. I know I'm catching little ones, guys, but I promise you there's some big ones up there. Just give me a little bit. I'm gonna make a few more casts, and then we'll uh, move on. Well, that's a limit, and that's a first place for Edwin Evers. Spot not nearly productive size-wise as it was yesterday. Not even close, but still, he's got the lead. So I'll throw it to you, Davey Height. The majority of our leaders from day one that are in this muddier water living with bladed jigs. Yeah, Edwin Evers having to rotate more today, but a bladed jig has been the primary weapon. You're exactly right, Z. We see Edwin change it around with the baits because he's got one spot that he knows a school of fish is on there. He caught a lot of them yesterday. He said he leaned on them a lot harder than he wanted to, so today he's having to mix it up quite a bit. But the bladed jig has worked for these guys the first day, and then also this morning, it's been the bait of choice among the top guys. I think it'll continue to be if we have clouds and have some wind. But the only thing I would worry about if the sun comes out with no wind, if that bladed jig will be able to be the bait that it has been the first two days. Well, James Elam thinks so. Four fish in the live well looking to fill out his five fish limit. They're running so hard after they bite it. It's got to be just a bunch more around. Lake Hartwell, apparently, like last growing season, was pretty low. I know it was low this winter, uh, but all this tumbleweed looking stuff, this 
shrubbery grew up, this grass, and now it's under the water. Uh, a lot of these flat back ends, uh, right in the middle of the flat back ends, it seems like there's been silt pushed out and, and, and it's made a point right in the middle of the back end. And so that grass has grown on that mud and the silt and it's actually made a point of that grass. And uh, there, <clears throat> there's a lot of places where the fish are hanging out on that, just out in the middle, you know, out in the middle of these back ends. And it's like, they're out there because of the cold front stuff we've had. They've been up, they've been in these back ends, but they're just sitting there waiting. And they're gonna, you know, move up and spawn and do what they do. That's a big one. That's right, oh, I'm not, not a big one. <laughs> Got him. It's a good. I'm gonna get a tag. James Elam with his biggest keeper of the day. That stretch of water has been so good to him. This is a precious spot. These he's had to share with one other guy, and they've both been doing very well there as we move over for our first look today at Brent Ayler. And Brent Ayler really started off like Jordan Lee on day number one. A lot of keepers and then upgrading, utilizing boat docks. But so far this morning, surprisingly, Brent Ayler said the cloud cover would help him with his underspin bite, chasing that herring bite. Well, that has not been the case so far. You listen right here, Brent Ayler starting to rotate different baits deep. Let's try one thing. Let me make a cast with my jig real quick. Then we're out of here. I don't think that they'd be sucked onto the bottom, but real fast. We're gonna hop it a couple times and then we're gone. I guess they do want it on the bottom. It feels like a good one too. Oh, I think I got a nice one. That's a nice one there. <laughs> Fat one, why not? I guess they want it on the bottom. Wasn't planning on that, but I'll give them what they want. Shoot, that's a two and a half pounder there. Oh, no. No. <laughs> uh, I licked and dropped that thing about four times and he smoked it. Maybe they want it on the bottom. I'll give them what they want. Heck yeah. Brent Ayler may be on to a little something right there. Certainly not on the pace he was on on day number one when he caught over 30 keepers. Looking for some size today and finding a little bit of it. He's firmly in the top 10 as we speak right now, but still plenty more fishing to go on day number two. We're trying to find the 25. We'll make it to championship day. It's going to take finding a couple key spots throughout the tournament to win this thing. It's real tricky fishing for me right now. I can catch a ton of fish, but it's hard to catch the winning fish. That part's really tricky. I know how to do it, but it's just hard to duplicate. Well, here in Greenville, the fans on day number one at the weigh-in, right after the weigh-in, treated to a special performance by country star Jason Aldi. First time here at the Bassmaster, it is, uh, it's an event, man. It's, it's, it's a little bigger than I thought it was. It's good to be here at the Bassmaster Classic. Thank you all for having us. Big thank you to Phil and Stream, too, for having us tonight. We appreciate it. You know, it's, it's cool, man. I've seen some really cool boats here today and, and uh, you know, some, some cool trucks and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's been pretty neat, but um, definitely something. I, I definitely want to come back and, and check it out when I got more time to, to hang out. I 
this stone cold country, Tom. Well, I fully agree with you there. And a big surprise for the people in the way in day number one. Didn't know that was coming up right after the show. Jason Aldean, let's get back out on the water with a man who took the lead out of that way in. Jason Christie, what a 2017 for him in the hunt all year long for Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Capped off the regular season with a win. Title from Jason Christie, 12 pounds, six ounces. Christie crushes him on championship Sunday, and he is your champion. That was a big milestone on the path that he was on, which is trying to win Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, and he would take it up to Mille Lacs, and there he just couldn't get it done. No doubt about it, though, but if you really have watched Jason Christie's career, he has not closed the door on major titles yet, but with that being said, he has been able to close the door on victories on the elites. He has, and quite a few in his young career, if you look at the big picture of things, knocking on the door of the AOI Championship. Brandon Polnick barely beat him out here, knocking on the door of the Bassmaster Classic just a couple years ago. He will close the door very soon. And here's the one thing about Christie coming into this tournament, eerily similar from Grand Lake. He said, I'm coming here with a game plan. My game plan, heavy line, power fishing, covering a lot of water. He said, look, man, that's how I know to win tournaments. That's what gets it done. And well, so far here at the Bassmaster Classic, well, that's exactly what he's done. Come here. Gotcha. Yeah. I need it out so bad. Lucky. I mean, I should have put it over. Don't put it on. <laughs> I need it that bad. You know what we call those? Tall Shelly. Tall Shelly showed up. Well, that is one of the things that makes Jason Christie so good at this. He will not deviate from his game plan. And really, if you watch him fish, he's relentless. And he said, you better have a lot of gas in your boat if you're following me. I love his mentality. He's fishing shallow. He's fishing for these big largemouth all day long. He's fishing boat docks. He's fishing that dead vegetation around the shoreline. He's one of the best at it. You just wonder with that mentality over a three-day tournament with, with the weather conditions changing, with the water temperature changing, if it can hold up for the entire tournament. Jason Christie, the only angler to make it over 20 pounds on day number one, darn near 21 pounds for Jason Christie. That's a hard pace to keep up, but if he can be somewhere in that neighborhood, he's gonna be unbeatable. Really, it's been a hard pace just to keep up with him on the water, covering so much water here on Hartwell. And really, if you watch your leaders from day one, Jason Christie, Edwin Evers, another angler that we're keeping our eye on today, Ott Defoe fishing, well, not that far from our takeoff, fishing in areas where they feel the bass are coming to. We've had really warm nights. Unlike practice, Ot Defoe, a slow morning on day one, caught them all afternoon, like a lot of our leaders. Well, if you listen to Ot Defoe right here, stay on the highway, stay on the highway where the bass are coming to. I know they're out here. It will happen right here sometime today whether it's for me or not, but it will happen. I am 100% committed to what I did up in the day, the way I caught my fish. I won't fish any other way the rest of this event. That'll be the way I fish. Not necessarily a single bait or a single area, but just the way I fish. That's how I will fish the rest of this tournament. All the other guys with cameras probably already have limits. There's a pot. Not a real big one, but that is my first one. Earliest I've caught one yet in this classic. It's a nice fish. You ate that Terminator spinnerbait up there. Shallow, buddy. It's a good chunky one anyway. Pre spawn fish, good and healthy.
two and a quarter. It's a good start to the day. I'm just saying everybody else has probably already got lemons, but I've got one anyway. I'm one closer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Russ. Look that fish freight trained it. I'm talking about smoked it. Late to get his first keeper, but he's ahead of yesterday's schedule for Adifo. Wound up in fifth place, and Adifo says, I love this area. It's got everything. It's got bridges, boat docks, rip raps. It is all there. And another fella who loves his area. Basically, to the extent he is not moving out of this spot, it's been very special for James Elam. James Elam with a good limit in the boat early on in the day, and you can bet he knows the importance of getting himself in that position on day number two of the Bassmaster Classic. That makes me feel a lot better getting five early. I've been so stressed out this type of fishing. There's not a lot of good back ends right now. Like, well, there's seven or eight of them, but I went into a bunch of them yesterday, and there's guys that did well that I think, you know, by the time I got in there, they'd been in there. And I couldn't catch them out of them, so I know there's not a lot to go around. I really needed this to come through to get me started. Nice little stack of fish. Nice when you can find something like that. Eat it. Hook in the tongue. They're all <laughs> biting weird like they are spawning, so it's just a weird deal. Well, you hear James Elam right there talking about fish possibly Everybody. starting to spawn with the warm days and nights. And something happens on this lake is we're going to fly back down lake on Hartwell, get around Jordan Lee. It's almost like it's a waiting game the further you go to the dam. It's a, it's a waiting game, but the, the big key here, in my opinion, is Jordan Lee just fishing the moment. He, he mentioned that he caught his fish yesterday on boat docks. This morning, he's starting out with a, a jerk bait. He's keeping a wacky worm in his hand, doing a lot of different things. It's so important in this tournament in particular, the way the weather's changed, the water clarity is changing, to fish the moment each and every day. I caught a lot of my fish off docks yesterday, so. I'm gonna wait a little bit before I started doing that. You know, for me, I mean, the keys, those large mouth, but, you know, my thinking is it's gonna, the later in the day is when I'm gonna have my definite chances. I mean, there's some good spots here. I mean, I know there's probably a, a good limit of spots if you could, If you could figure out, get out through these little ones. It's a little better one right here. There we go. How cold? See, I mean, look at those fatties. I'm cold up with these. No catch a kicker head. You know, you'd be sitting. There we go. Making some cold. I'm sure when you're catching plenty of those solid spotted bass, it's kind of hard to make your make your turn in your day, make your move like he did yesterday. And of course, when he made that move to the boat docks yesterday, met with big time success. The size went up. He had a great day on day number one when he caught 18 pounds and 10 ounces, including an almost six yeah. pound largemouth. What a first day for a classic. I have a good first day. I, I had one almost six pounds, so. But you throw that fish in everybody's bag and it, it boosts you up there. So, I mean, like, it's gonna change every day. That's the thing. The way I'm fishing, I know it's not gonna just be lights out and I'm gonna have to make some kind of adjustment and just try to figure out something else to try to get a big bite.
Here's a great tradition at the Classic, the day before the fishing, Fan Appreciation Day. The fans love this, Davey. Absolutely, Tommy, and the fishermen love it, too. This was always one of my favorite days. Other than the fishing itself, this was my favorite day at the Classic. Get to meet all these people, sign a few autographs, and just have a fun day of it. Some very approachable guys, these bass fishing pros, and now let's approach Edwin Evers trying to do a little management. Hey, guys. Hey, if you guys can stay on that bank, there's grass right in the middle. Just stay on that bank, <laughs> right in there. It's a good one. It's a good one. That big old fish, long and skinny. Edwin Evers, now this is the turn in his day he was looking for. Had no trouble putting a limit in the boat, but getting some size in the boat. That's what's been the problem. Now he can cull and upgrade. I got a little bit better bite there. It's a, a morning deal. They, they weren't very big. There's still a lot of fish there. I left them biting, but they're just small. We got a lot of time left. I say that the day is going, but we're just gonna keep covering the water and uh, get us four or five big bites here before the day is out. Edwin Evers nowhere near that 19, almost 20 pounds that he caught on day number one, but there's still plenty of time, more time to operate for this guy who's uh, looking to take his second Geico Bassmaster Classic in two years. From up in the Tugaloo River, we're gonna move down to Brent Ayler, who's been kind of switching things around a little bit on day two. Yeah, we gotta keep an eye on the lower end of the lake. Everyone said coming in this tournament, that's where the bigger fish of the lake live, the largemouth and the spotted bass. Brent Ayler's trying to keep them both honest. Oh, God, he, man, he knocked slack in it. I got him that time. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. He's not that big. He's not that big, but boy, I thought he was a big one. He's a fat one, though. Dude, is that a largemouth? That's a largemouth, I think. <laughs> I can't even tell. <laughs> can't tell what he is. I think that's a largemouth. I don't know what he's doing out there. Ooh, there's one coming up. Ooh, stay there, stay there. Stay there, stay there. Oh, he's, he's flying up to come meet it. Two of them. Whoa, that's weird. They came flying up to meet it, and then boy, they went flying back down. They did not like the looks of it. That's weird. That's really weird. Brent Ayler covering a lot of stuff there, including his electronics, which are playing a big part in his effort. Here on Lake Hartwell, Brent Ayler trying to make it. Well, he's going to make it to the top 25. Can he make it to be the trophy holder as we take a look at Jordan Lee? Maybe making that move right now, Z. Exactly right. An identical game plan to Brent Ayler. Fish out deep, catch a limit, then keep the boat docks honest. The problem with the boat docks here on Hartwell, number one, from mid lake to the dam, if you listen to guys like Casey Ashley, they'll tell you the fish either have to live deep or under these docks, but they are very, very time consuming the fish. Again, Jordan Lee yesterday, day number one, fantastic day, 18 pounds and 10 ounces. He's not on that pace today, but comeback seemed to be a specialty for this young man right here. Last year, 2017, Geico Bassmaster Classic on Lake Conroe. He starts in 15th place, 12 pounds back of the leader and engineers. Just the greatest comeback of all time. And Geico Bassmaster Classic history to take his first of what many say might be multiple Bassmaster Classics. Yeah, you know, it feels like a normal classic to me. I mean, my goal really is just to have fun. Winning last year was just meant to be for me. So, I mean, as long as I fish clean, I mean, I'm not really 
just really thinking about winning right now. It's more just, you know, fish the day, have fun. Big No, he's not. I thought he was. Man, he got. He, God, he's got some kind of. I thought he was a big, large mouse before I caught that one yesterday. He fooled me. He waited a little longer today, Jordan Lee, to make his move to the boat docks, but there you go. Some quick feedback for this young man who's had a taste of what it's like to win a Geico Bassmaster Classic holding in third place today. As you can bet, back-to-back -back repeats of the World Championship are on his mind. Bass fishing is measured by the Bassmasters Classic. I mean, this is the pinnacle. So it's the Masters, it's the Daytona 500, it's the Super Bowl, it's the World Series, it's the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, it's March Madness, the final, you know, looking forward to that final four. That's our Super Six, you know, on Sunday. There's, there's just nothing like it. If you're a bass fishing fan, you already know that. If you're not, you know, don't follow it. Um, the Bassmasters Classic is everything to us. The 2018 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by Dick Sporting Goods is brought to you by Nitro Boats. Abu Garcia, Hummingbird, and by Triton Boats. 52 anglers out there trying to make it to day number two. Welcome back to the Toyota Bassmaster Studios. Tommy Sanders here with Davey Height and Mark Zona. And Davey, these guys not quite on the blistering pace they set on day number one. It's a little slower this morning. It's been tough on these guys. The conditions are changing. The wind has changed so much. It's the Bassmaster Classic. You're going to have to adjust each and every day to win this thing. No doubt about it. And really, if you looked at a lot of the leaders after the day one way, and they'll tell you, boy, it looked a lot better on paper. With that being said, though, with that being said, in this tournament, with it getting warmer, warm nights, a lot of these guys in the lead are waiting for the fish to come to them. Well, what we have seen in this 2018 edition of the Geico Bassmaster Classic so far, how about our defending champion probably not deciding to take a year off? He's going to try to contest for this one. I would definitely agree with that right now. Jordan Lee, slow and steady and meat and potatoes, starts out in the morning catching quantity and upgrading on docks late each afternoon so far. Yes. There we go, baby. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There we go. Big large mouth in the second half of his day number one, a big day number one, for Jordan Lee in third place, right behind him, this man, Brent Ayler. Yes, both Jordan Lee and Brent Ayler, when the sun comes out at the end of the day, on day one, we're able to skip Cinco's under these docks and catch the big large mouth that made a difference in their bag. Oh, it's a giant one. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh my goodness. Just come here. Please, come here. Oh. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! My goodness, I'm such a giant. We gotta go. We gotta go. Unbelievable ending to day one for Brent Ayler. With, I'm talking about a dead gum South Carolina stud right there. But if you were at the weigh in for day number one, that would not be the Berkeley Big Bass of the day. How about Mark Daniels? Six pound, 11 ounce. I mean, look at the size of that thing, Tom. Gigantic bass there from Mark Daniels and a good day one coming up in eighth place with 15 pounds and 14 ounces. But the big shot of the day, 20 pounds plus from Jason Christie. 20 pounds, 14 ounces. 20 pounds, 14 ounces. And Jason Christie is your brand new Geico Daily Leader. Big time speculation before this tournament started. Would someone bust 20 pounds or better with a single day's limit? Jason Christie answered that question. Didn't take much time at all to get that one out of the way. You really watch Jason Christie fish in this tournament right now compared to the last few classics. The last few classics have been won on spots. 
if you really look at what Jason Christie's doing, completely running a pattern. He's running a pattern and obviously a very good one, the only one to have over 20 pounds the first day. I worry about it a little bit because other guys that are catching them well are running the same type pattern. Two years ago, second in the Bassmaster Classic, second Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Last year, this is a pattern he's trying to Come break. Here. Yeah. I needed that one so bad. Well, nobody gives you anything in the Geico Bassmaster Classic. And of course, his roommate, Edwin Evers, not gonna give this thing to his roommate, Jason Christie, that's for sure. Evers just behind him, second place after the first day, and keeping pace on day number two. Exactly right, Tommy. If this was a numbers tournament, Edwin Evers is by far lapping the field, but different from day one, having trouble upgrading the limit in his live well. At the end of day one, we talked to him. He said, man, I just hate I had to burn my starting spot. Those fish were, were really good for him the first day. He caught a lot of what he weighed in. The second day, only small fish there. He's had to go to his vibrating jig. Like you said, catching numbers, but not the one he really wants to take to the scales. Good. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Look at that big old fish. Oh, that's skinny. By far the biggest bass of the day for Edwin Evers and his campaign to keep pace neck and neck with Jason Christie. No doubt about it, though. Really, if you look at the standings right now, this was the time of day from here to the weigh-in where the biggest ones got caught on day number one. Absolutely. We talked to the leaders after day one, and every single one of them caught a key fish in the afternoon. Most of them their biggest fish, whether they were fishing offshore, fishing deep, or fishing shallow with a wacky worm, vibrating jig, it didn't matter. Those bigger fish came in the last hour. Pretty clear from sort of uh, scanning the leaderboard there that the weights are not where they were on day number one. Things have gotten a little tougher, and those top 10 spots have gotten much, much tighter. The competition tightening up and more fishing yet to come on day number two. Second day of the Geico Bassmaster Classic, 48th edition of this World Championship of Bass Fishing from Lake Hartwell here in South Carolina. Let's have our first look of the day at the man who won last year to start the Bassmaster Elite Series season on Lake Cherokee in Tennessee, Tennessee's own Jacob Wheeler. We can, if we can just put one, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, that's the thing is you don't want to necessarily, there's only so many places that are good, you have a lot of potential to catch a good one. And so you don't want to be crazy, but at the same point in time, I'm like, man, I know a lot of stretches, you know, just a little, you know, run down through there and ride, ride, go to the next one. A lot of times in the clear water, someone's follow that bait and you're like, sorry, son of a gun. That's him, that's her. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That sticker was not coming off. You want to talk about anglers that are changing with the weather right now. You look at Jacob Wheeler, so many different techniques happening on Lake Hartwell going to a topwater buzz bait. Three pounder, it was skinny, a oh, little dang freaking five. Had a head of a five. I thought it was a big in. I thought I was being big. Odd Defoe said he was saving a buzz bait for the final day. Jacob Wheeler jumping the gun there, getting it going on day number two and getting some results right there. Meanwhile, our Geico quotes from the boat, Robbie Floyd with Gerald Swindle dealing with an issue. But I just got off the phone with a man and he said, you get a boat, do you safe to restart, put your fish in there and take off. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure I don't do this and then end up getting disqualified. 
The G-Man, Gerald Swindle, two-time angler of the year, is having problems out on the water up the Seneca River. He's been hanging around the top 10 today, and he just had a flurry of fish caught, but he has big motor problems. He's going to have to find a way to either get that motor fired up, keep fishing, and head back to check in, or switch boats. Either way, no matter how many fish, how big a fish you catch, you have to find a way to check them in. Perfect timing, right? See, I'm going to try to salvage the last two hours and nothing else boat ramp, which probably going to be that one right there. You know, I don't know if I got uh, ethanol breakdown in the fuel or I picked up water at the gas station last night, but 11 o'clock, the motor went down. Uh, could get it to fire, but couldn't get it to stay up. And, you know, you can't predict that. You can't plan for it. Sometimes I don't even worry about it. You, you scratch your head. It is what it is. Day two is not what I wanted, but it's what I got. It's the cars have been dealt with. So. I'll make it up tomorrow. You do not want to have to deal with that at the Geico Bassmaster Classic day one, two, or three. But Gerald Swindle said he lost a net two hours with that incident right and there. Good thing Jordan Lee had a solid morning earlier today because it has not happened. Jordan Lee has not got a bite on docks in two hours. Been trying, just ran some of the same water I did yesterday and hadn't got any bites, so. Still looking. Still got plenty of time, just need a big bite or two. We're gonna go try to get it. Weight wise, he's definitely behind the pace he set on day number one. Jordan Lee trying to hang in there in the top five or six as we head into day number three. And like you say, Z, anytime he's put at loose ends, he doesn't have something going. That's when he's the most dangerous. And, and really, if you looked at his morning, catching a solid fish here on a swim bait, but really on this day too, the key adjustment was going to that suspending deep diving jerk bait. Absolutely, Z, and unexpectedly, we did not see him throw it the first day. It's a good thing he broke it out. Most everyone thought that today would be the day where there'd be multiple 20 pound bags. It's slow rain, a warm night. Didn't turn out to be that way. Jordan Lee made a great call starting with his suspending jerk bait this morning. I got just one with it. That's not a good one. Help, but it should have been a large mouth in there, but Jordan Lee doing everything he can, and that's gonna help him right there. That's gonna afford him a slight advantage, a slight upgrade of six ounces, and now back over to James Elam. He's had a limit for a good while now today. Ben. Dang it! Dang it! You hit it weird. Try to hook them on something else other than that. At least they're still here, so I'm um, a three pounder. Just need the good wind to make it meet that thing, I guess. There's a bite. That will get rid of one. It's a good fish. It's fat. It's got a little red on him. Elam started the day in sixth place with that call. He moves all the way inside the top five, fourth place for now. Exactly right from James Elam back to Jason Christie. And one thing Jason Christie said he looked for throughout the entire practice session was finding males, males that pushed up shallow because wherever he found any of those males, he knew he can go back to these same pockets and exploit any females that would get shallow with them. Cool. Every time, 
When we come live, we get a bite. That's the problem though, you just get, fish these drains, you just get one bite each one. It's the first pocket in a while, I've caught more than one fish. I think the thing that I like most about the Classic is it simply it happens at my favorite time of year. Most of the time it's a pre-spawn event and uh, you know I love that. That's what I grew up fishing. That's what I got the most confidence fishing and, and a lot of times I feel like I can kind of guess where those fish are going to be at. Dang it, go down. I'm telling you, we just need to go off live, back on live. That's how, that's when I catch one. We just need to do something to make them bigger. And all I can do is swing. People's probably asking, well, why, why don't you try something different? I don't think I can win doing something different. This is what I got confidence in winning. Jason Christie not catching the weight he caught on day number one, but he is out fishing the competition like he did on day number one. Right now, as it stands, he's extended his lead over Edwin Evers to over three and a half pounds. Jordan Lee hanging in there solid in third place. Big moves today by James Elam and Micah Frazier inside the top five. Very important day, moving day. Be in the top 25. And there's room for anyone else to make a move. You know, I grew up fishing. I mean, I grew up from the time I, I think I could walk, I was fishing, and, and, and I, it was just, it was baby steps, you know. I can't tell you how many times I've been out there fishing, you know, just fun fishing. And it's always a competition, even if I'm by myself, you know. I can't tell you how many times I've said, an hour left to go. I need two four-bounders to have 20, and I win the Classic. And, and I kind of got that from whenever I played basketball. You know, I, I never got out there and shot around. It was always five, four, three, two, one, and you shoot at the buzzer. And, and the good thing about that was is if you miss, you got fouled and you got to go to the free throw line. So you know, we don't get to go to the free throw line in the classic, but I feel like I need it. Forty-eighth edition of the World Championship of Bass Fishing, the Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. This 2018 edition coming to you from Lake Hartwell near Anderson, our other host city here in South Carolina. Third time we've been to Lake Hartwell in the past decade. Man, oh man, it's always serving up a good test for these anglers. And here's a guy who you need to test because he is so good. That is Ot Defoe, definitely one of the favorites coming in here. And Ot Defoe, a good day one. Uh, fourth place with 16 pounds and eight ounces, but didn't catch them all until the afternoon, Z, the, the, the majority of them. That is the major point to make about Ot Defoe on day number one. He chased the herring bite down the lake, mid lake, all the way to the dam, and finally gave up on it and went to this area where he had not pre fished. Really, if you look at day number two so far, Ot Defoe is ahead of schedule. Stay up there, baby. Number three. Decent little chunk. I thought you was gonna be much, much larger than that the way you hit it. I just moved back here to where I caught my first one and missed another one. I'm gonna come back in here and give it another shake. Thank you, Lord. Goes. It's almost two and a quarter. That fish was on the bladed jig. Just a green pumpkin, half ounce bladed jig, and I've got a Bass Pro Sassy Sally green pumpkin watermelon trailer on the back of it. I like that green pumpkin this time of year, really all the year, but the water's not just super muddy or it seems to be the color I do best on. 
Three keepers in the boat for Ott Defoe. Don't, don't be misled by that. He was down there in 26th place, according to the leaderboard. But remember, his schedule's been different from everyone else. He's actually ahead of his schedule for yesterday, but he doesn't get his big work done until the afternoon. Heading over now to Brent Ayler. Yesterday was a big day for him. In terms of numbers, 30-plus keepers caught. Today he's had to improvise a little bit more. And to see what he's been using, let's take a look at our Skeeter Boats Taste the Bait. So Z, I really like what Brent Ayler's doing here. He's starting deeper on what we like to call heron spots, and then he's moving up shallower, like you said, for the fish to come to him, those pre-spawn fish. Exactly right, Davey, and that's gonna be our Skeeter Boats Taste the Bait. Really watching Brent Ayler and his history on this lake fishing deep is watching perfection. And he went at him with three different lures, an underspin with a small swim bait, a three-quarter ounce jig, and a nail weight worm. Really, how he has won other tournaments on this lake. And the main reason for those three baits, very high landing probability. But after he fishes deep, yeah. as we saw on day one, yeah. that's where the meat went in the live well. <laughs> as Mark Zona said, the meat came later. That was day one again at Ayler, a guy so versatile with so many options and really knowing how to catch him on this specific body of water, Lake Hartwell. Now he's doing something a little bit different. You could see the contrast between yesterday, bright sun and, and catching him on the boat docks. Today he's having to, well, switch around again, adapt again, keep moving, Brent Ayler. He's got it. Oh, he let go. You gotta be kidding me. Why did you do that? Gotta be, oh, he had it for a second there again. Yeah, that'll definitely call. Oh, he's barely hooked. Barely hooked. Boy, look how fat those things are. Look at this thing right here. He better not spit that up. Can you see that in his throat? He has a giant tail in his throat. I don't know what that is. That looks like a bass that he's got in there. I don't know how he got that thing down. That's insane. I don't know how a little spot of bass swallows a fish that big. Look, that's bubble lip right there. Real bubble lip. Real bubble. A popcorn shrimp. You do shrimp any way you want. Let's see if he likes that again down there. Good old Benjamin Buford Blue from Forrest Gump, Bubba. Ah, uh, Brent Ayler with a small call right there and to watch him fish deep on this lake is like watching, well, pretty much a surgeon. Really, throughout the day, you need to watch if he decides to make that move shallow again. Yeah, movie buff and master angler Brent Ayler moving up into the top 10, trying to become the winner of the Geico Bass Master Classic. The world championship and we are getting closer to the end of day number two we'll be right back came in with, with our partners at Field of Stream to, to come in. We got a new album coming out, so we want to come in and play some songs and and uh, surprise the fans here a little bit, give them a free show, and, and uh, looking forward to, to checking out my first Bassmaster Classic. Hear that, have to find out when that album's dropping. Yeah, I'll have to get on Google and check that out for you, Mark Zona. Definitely a big surprise, a, a treat for the fans at the Bon Secure Wellness Arena in Greenville. After the weigh-in on day number one, surprise a performance there from Jason Aldean, one of the hottest names in all of country music. Let's get out to definitely one of the hottest anglers in the last two or three years on the Bassmaster Elite Series, James Ely. James has done a good job, had a great start the first two mornings and just continues to catch fish throughout the day, primarily using a bladed jig, but also mixing in a little Texas rig Cinco, Texas rig Lizard, going old school for us to see. 
just good quality fish. His fish are just moving in. He mentioned earlier how white these fish are. Every single one you see him catch are just moving in this spawning area, staging on this dog fennel point that's under the water. He said about four or five feet deep. Yeah, I don't know if this one's gonna help. James Elam with another solid bass up the river system here on Lake Hartwell. And one of the benefits of what James Elam, Jason Christie, and guys like Edwin Evers are doing right now, really, they don't have that voice of, man, I need to be deep, I need to be shallow. They have locked into the upper end of Hartwell. They really have, and they're doing doing really well. I'm concerned about whether they're gonna run out of fish because they're fishing shallow, and there's only so many places that have this water color and this vegetation. But man, they're getting it done right now. They're locked in, and the quality of fish, oh, catching yeah. primarily largemouth. Every once in a while, a spotted bass, but primarily largemouth, the quality is there. My only concern would be, can it hold up for another day? I've educated them pretty good to reaction baits. I've, I've brought out the old fluke stick, you know, this wacky rig, Cinco type bait. And, uh, you know, I left them biting on this earlier. They're just small when I left here the first time. I'm gonna do this just a little bit more. I got a whole bunch of other stuff really pulling at me to go do. We're gonna make the most of it right here. Try to get to that magic 15, 16 pound mark and, uh, Hopefully play again tomorrow. That's my little better one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. That's getting better. I've got to figure out what the smallest bass is in here. Edwin Evers getting ready to do a little culling math right now. He lets something slip. He thinks his number today is 15, 16. That's the magic number he needs to hit today. Exactly right. Heading over to Ot Depot right here. And all of our leaders, you can't stress this enough, each one of them said the presence of wind is what makes them bite here on Hartwell. And pretty much the next two hours is the witching hour for Rot Defoe. Stay on there. Yeah, baby. Man, I just had a feeling about this little gut. I hope it fell out. I had a feeling about that little gut that goes right into the here. I put my talons down. Threw over to the other side and caught my best one so far. Yeah, I'll be close to three. That's dude, that is like the perfect staging place right there. Three pounder. Those are the size I need to have right there. It's a little better. I need like three of these and then a couple big ones. But hey, I've got a limit. And it's about what time I had um, none yesterday. <laughs> we got a long way to go. Yeah, that was cool. I fished through here yesterday. I kind of run this little gut over before I realized what I what it was. That's it's the perfect place for one to stop on his way in. We said it as the day wears on, Lake Hartwell, at least the upper end, starting to heat up. Starting to heat up, the water temperature rising, but also a little bit of wind, like you mentioned, Z. Been real, real big for these guys in the afternoon. 
Jacob Wheeler is fishing top water. We haven't seen anyone else, but he's had some success with a buzz bait. Right here, I'm throwing this Jinru hammer crawl on the back of a buzz bait. And what I'll do is I'm cutting this bait off right here at the top. This is a little accent buzz bait right here. I throw them on there and then I can skip them around and they hold it so much better. Skip them around, it's got a little keeper right there. Trim the skirt up and it's ready to go. Peel that off, got a little kick in action. A little bit larger profile, catches bigs. That'll call. Come here, come here. Uh huh. Where's your dad at? Thank you. Probably close to two and a half pounds. 282. Good, two and three quarter. Number three. On the larger side, got three pounders, and we got all right. We got close to 14 now. We just need a dang big. Head. You just went for the okie doke. <laughs> Jacob Wheeler's so good at this style fishing, going through a ton of baits, top water, swim bait, jigs, you name it. And not only that, Jacob Wheeler does not have a kicker fish yet. Yeah, he guesses he's got about 14 pounds. He had 16 yesterday, if he can make it up to that figure. He'll be in the top six by the end of the day. And Jacob Wheeler, yet another one of these incredible 20-somethings who are absolutely killing it in the world of professional bass fishing for the past three years. Take off day one, you know, I definitely had some nerves. Uh, this is my second classic, and uh, it was one of those things that, but you know you have a job to do. You competed all year to get to this point. You want to do well for your family, your fans, your friends, um, but at the end of the day, it's all between you and the fish. Back in Greenville, South Carolina, the TD Convention Center, the Geico Bassmaster Classic Outdoors Expo, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. This has always been one of the premier outdoor shows in the country year in and year out. In the past few years, it just seems to gain in prestige and momentum. Big crowds this week, and everyone also keeping one eye on what's happening out on Lake Hartwell and what is happening is Jason Christie right in the middle of trying to win this thing wire to wire. We just need a couple bites. That's all we need. Keep telling myself that they're gonna move up. You know, there's gonna be a big wad of them come shallow. This hadn't happened yet. I mean, for me, to me, it's all about just covering water and trying to get those fish that's just pulled up. This here is kind of risky. I mean, but this is where I feel like they're gonna show up at some point. It's been a lot slower day. You know, I haven't caught as many fish. Of course, you know, when I caught that big one off that. Uh, uh, dock, you know, I kind of switched from what I was doing yesterday morning, on, you know, where I caught a bunch of fish to fishing for big ones. And I don't know if that's hurt us or what. Taking a look at where Jason Christie won an FLW tournament years back, not playing so far today. And really, if you look at his track in our Yamaha Unlock the Lake, Davey, his game plan is truly a law of average. You're exactly right, Z. He told us from day one, I'm all about covering water, throwing power fishing, fishing shallow, stained water as these fish are moving up. He keeps mentioning every time we go to him, it seems like I'm counting on a wave of fish to move up. We're gonna let all the spectators get going, then we're gonna go to the juice.
going to be a keeper and another successful cull for Jason Christie with the promise of maybe even bigger things to come. He says, wait till all the spectators will be gone, and then we'll go to the juice. How, if you're leading the Classic, do you make all the spectators go away? That would be my question to Jason Christie at this point. Never. Never. <laughs> When you don't feel him bite and you see him flash and swim, you might need to jerk. He was just coming right with me. Well, and that juice is Beaver Dam Creek, exactly where he won the FLW tournament years ago. A lot of today looks very random for Jason Christie, but he has a game plan. He has a game plan, and he's planning on going to Beaver Dam Creek. It's really shallow and flat, and these spectators will affect him a lot more there. Where he's at now, they don't really affect him adversely, but when he goes in that flat, shallow grass, these spectators could be an issue. So that's how you get rid of spectators. All right, now we got that solved. Let's head out to Mark Daniels. What a great day one in his first. First Geico Bassmaster Classic, 15 pounds and 14 ounces, including a six pound, 11 ounce Berkeley. Big bass of the tournament. He'd like to do that again on day two for sure. Man, that was a long time coming. We needed that one, baby. Boy, we needed him. Super weird, dude. There's like some deep brush or something right down there. Man, late in the day, that one was clutch. You know, I'm sitting probably like right around nine pounds and um, I need a couple big bites. So that one right there, coming through right on time. Still need us. As soon as you find us a 6'11", though. Mark Daniels finished day one in eighth place. Right now he's sitting at 16th place. So yeah, he's a remedy for that right now. There'd be a good remedy right there. Berkeley big bass of the tournament, but this young man is living his dream. And he is having great success in the world of pro bass fishing. I've been dreaming about this since I was probably six years old. And I've been beating my brains crazy this week, every day from practice day to practice day to off day to media day. Just all these thoughts traveling through my mind that you have an opportunity to make history here. It's really surreal. I kind of gotta, gotta pinch myself. That is really the only way I can explain the feeling right now. The 2018 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by Dick Sporting Goods is brought to you by Toyota. Yamaha, Skeeter Boats, Power Pole. Oh, time is running out on this day two of the Geico Bassmaster Classic. That's where everybody's going to end up right there. The Bon Secours Wellness Arena, downtown Greenville. That's where this day two weigh-in will decide for, well, among other things, who's going to fish on day number three, only the top 25 are going to get to go there right now. Let's go out to Lake Hartwell and a young man who's laid the groundwork, pretty much got the job done making it to day three, Jacob Wheeler. We definitely got to get a four pound bite now. I mean, because we all got, we got all like two, two and a half, two and three quarters, you know, it's nice for a solid bag, but it's tough to gain a lot of ground unless you get a giant. I mean, it's, it's easy to mess up here and catch 12 pounds, but Christy ain't going to do that. He catch 14. I told myself if I catch 15, 17, and 20, I'd probably have a shot at winning. My beer. How about help? I think he's gonna help. Six 
Because if they were fat, we'd be all right. Stop it. Number five and number two. Small call right there for Jacob Wheeler. And so many of our leaders have said to us, we need wind. Just a ripple makes such a huge difference on the upper end of Hartwell. One of those anglers, Jason Christie, and here's the amazing thing. There is no wind predicted for Championship Sunday. There's not, I hope he's able to catch him, but the wind has been critical for all these guys. Jason Christie has waited till late in the day when we do have a little wind to go back to Beaver Dam Creek. Five pounder. Watching Jason Christie right here, literally, he planned, he talked about that bite, saving this area all day, a critical miss. Every move is planned in the classic for a fisherman like Jason Christie. He's gone to his best area, the wind finally started blowing, it's late in the day, and you get that five pound bite. In the Bassmaster Classic, you never know when the bite you may or may not land could be the winning fish. It could be day one, it could be day two, it could be day three. We always want to focus on the last hour of the final day, but every single fish on every single day is very, very critical. Everything's compressed in the Classic, only three days of fishing, so every mistake, as you say, Davey, looms large, and Jason Christie will have that one on his mind no matter how hard he tries to forget it. Well, what started out as a marathon now is, looks like it's going to be a sprint, you know, the last day. Um, today I kind of got a little stagnant fishing some of the same stuff and I learned something. I mean, I learned there's not new fish coming in, so I need to stay in fresh water all day and just, you know, put my bait where it needs to be and execute. If I get a bite, um, it needs to come in the boat. Took long. Tall Shelly number two. I caught that fish in practice. 100% sure it's the same fish. Well, we had our chances today. I mean, we, that's just like yesterday, I'm not getting a lot of bites. Uh, fortunate enough that, you know, we caught one right there at the end of the day to uh, hopefully give us a chance. And, you know, no telling how these guys caught them. I'm sure they caught them great. So it's, we should fish tomorrow. And I feel like what I'm doing could potentially catch, you know, 20 to 25 if I, you know, have the right, the perfect day. So go see, go weigh them and see. See, see where we're at. Jason Christie, the leader, coming into day number two of this Bassmaster Classic. Like probably, I'm guessing a lot of the other guys thought he had it set to where the fish were coming to him. He said that's not been actually the case today, so tomorrow becomes a sprint. Let's see what he knocked down today. Let's hear it for your day one Geico Bassmaster Classic leader. And I think this is about to change. He's going to be the day two leader. We'll see. 11 pounds, five ounces, what he needs. 16 pounds, six ounces. 16, six. And Jason Christie becomes your brand new Geico Daily Leader. Well, you saw it, everyone encountering a much slower day two than day one in this classic 16, six. He's definitely going to give Jason Christie a commanding lead. And another Oklahoman. How about Edwin Evers looking for his second Bassmaster Classic victory? Slipping up a little bit, only 13 pounds here on day two, but has him in second place. Yeah, Edwin had a good day today. Not as many numbers as he had caught on day one, but still a good day. And Micah Frazier, the guy that you call the dark horse that might win this thing, Zona, had a good day. He's in third place. Keep an eye on him tomorrow for sure. Micah Frazier definitely one of these overachieving 
20-somethings. James Elam, maybe just a shade over 30, but he has performed at full speed today. Definitely a good day for him at 15 pounds, 10 ounces. He is in a solid fourth place after two days of competition. A trying day for Gerald Swindle, but somehow rebounds and actually made some of his bigger calls late in the afternoon. 15 pounds and 7 ounces, total over 31 pounds has Gerald Swindle in fifth place. And young Jordan Lee, last year's classic winner, you cannot forget about him. He is always in contention every single event. He is fishing several different ways, fishing shallow blow-throughs early in the morning, fishing the docks in the afternoon for those big large mounts. Well, the story's pretty clear from looking at the leaderboard. Jason Christie with a five pound advantage over the rest of the field. And what keeps us from giving it over to him right now, Davey, is the fact that when we look back at 2016, he had the same advantage going into the final day there. He did, and you say to yourself, that certainly can't happen to him again. A five pound lead, one of the best fishermen in the world the last few years, maybe the best, some people would say, with that lead. But the weather conditions are gonna change. If the winds calm down, will he be able to continue to keep catching them? The only thing that you could say is really, if you looked at this day two of competition, Competition. That was not a pretty day. One here, one there. And another thing to look at, look at the past few Bassmaster Classics going into the final day. If there's a curveball, it usually happens on the final it day. It happens on the final day. Christie on a, on a track that he plotted out when this classic location was announced. Can he make it last for one more day? That's more than one reason besides that to tune in for the final round, final day of the Bassmaster Classic when we see you next time.